I, I have not really used this next app pick for myself a lot, but I have used it a lot for communicating with other people. Um, wow, uh, there was a Windows user uh, who... Uh, it was a it was a it was a producer that we had worked with at one point who used Windows, and I needed to send him a whole bunch of text files, a whole mm-hmm. bunch of Markdown files. It was like it was like fifty five megabytes of Markdown files that if I compressed it, it compressed down to like three hundred and fifty kilobytes. But it was confidential, so I wanted to encrypt it. I wanted to secure it, and he wasn't super savvy, so I wanted him to be able to have a self extracting file on his Windows box, even though my machine was a Linux box. Right, so there's mm-hmm. a lot of moving parts here. I want it encrypted, I want it self-extracting, and I want something that's got a GUI so that way I can be lazy. And so that's where I found PZIP. It's PZIP, and it's really, really nice because it lets you basically compress to any of your favorite formats. I like 7-zip, but of course it does GZIP, RAR, TAR, ZIP, uh, and of course you can also un-RAR, and it has packages available for Windows. I, it may have, even have a Mac version, I'm not sure, but it definitely has a Linux version. And under Linux, it can, co- it can, can create a self-extracting archive. <clears throat> With fairly good comp- uh, encryption, which I'm I'm kind of a fan of. It's a, it's also available. Another thing I like in Qt or GTK. So depending on your desktop flavor, you get one, and it's also available in the Arch user repository. So without further ado, I'll show it to you. So here is the GTK version, and I'm looking at my picture files right now. So I've browsed. You might you might be familiar if you've seen any of the other proprietary file compression like you know zip. So I've selected a few files right here, and I can go ahead and I can create a new archive. And what I love about this is here's an example of. Uh, I can say where I want to put it. So I'm just going to say, let's say, uh, dirty pictures, even though they're just Star Trek pictures. Dirty pictures.zip, right? <clears throat> now, it doesn't have to be a zip file either. It could be anything from a tar GZ to a 7-zip, or how about this one, a self-extracting 7-zip file or a self-extracting ARC file. Now, this is extremely nice when you're dealing with basic Windows users, right? Because maybe I want to have this password protected, but I don't have... I don't have a lot of reliability on the other end of my reception. It's not going to be the best protection possible, but if my end user is a Windows user or my end user is a Linux user, this is an, am- this is an amazing application. It's PZIP. It's a great way to set up a self-extraction archive that extracts on their own end that can be password protected or can use a key file. It can use a key file, too, which is really nice. And uh, I love it. It's a, it, there's, the, it, I, I, I mostly use the built-in uh, desktop environment uh, extraction tools and... Um, compression tools, but really, Noah, if you want something that works across multiple desktops, so you and I often advocate if you're going to move somebody over from Windows to Linux, but you want to give, yeah. the, but you want to give them a really good tool, mm-hmm. this is a perfect one. So one of the things I like a lot about PZIP is it pulls in different types of encryption depending on what you want to do. And so whatever, like, I don't know if I would rely on this. Um, for like the Snowden files, yeah. but you know, if it's like, you know, if it's, if it's a picture of my dick, <laughs> I'm not I'm not as concerned because I mean first of all it's a pretty impressive dick but second of all like you know if you want to really look at that you can so I will use I, I would be I would be comfortable using the encryption and the compression built into PZIP uh, it's it's P E A ZIP it's open source and it's available in Qt GTK and command line for available also for BSD Windows and maybe the Mac I'm, I'm not quite sure on that have you ever tried it I have not I so um, I have. I used to be concerned about raw files and, and zip files and stuff when I, back in the day when I had to move things at 1.4 megs because they had to fit on a floppy. Mm-hmm. At that point, I was concerned about rawing everything up and then dividing it out into different parts and, and moving thing o- things over. Nowadays, everything I do is 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 in a tar.gz, and everyone from a Windows perspective is, is putting things into a zip file, and of course, I can unpack or repack either of those on Linux. But where this shines out to me is the encryption part yes. of it. Is, this seems like it, it, this seems like what this could be is a mediocre replacement for TrueCrypt, at least in in the basic sense of keeping the honest people honest. You got it, man. You got it. that's exactly that's exactly why I love it. Uh, you nailed it, and it, and it's it's actually fairly good encryption, and it uh, you don't, it's not very draconian about the implementation. It's here's the three boxes, answer these three questions, and then you yeah. send it to somebody, and then you hear, and then you know, like for you and I, what I would do is I would send you the file, and I'd be like, hey man, here's the password. And that's yeah. That's all we really need. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Noah. So that's a, that's sort of a security desktop app pick. Now, all of us have a creative side. After we get super serious about our security, we got to unwind and enjoy a little bit of music. Now, no, I love this one because this is actually one that you use from time to time. It's called Hydrogen. Yeah. So I, uh, uh, well, a hobby is uh, I. I've been kind of involved in in music my whole life. I, I kind of grew up with it, and uh, and so a lot of that has moved over to uh, you know 
composing uh, electronically or at least recording electronically. And one of the nice things is, is, is if, if you're putting a piece together, you want to put something, the, the first thing you need is, is a good beat. And uh, you can go and, and, and lay down a track on an electric drum set, or if you really want to spend some time, mic an acoustic drum set. It's a lot easier to use a sequencer. And of course, if I'm going to do it, it's going to be done on Linux. So I actually was playing with hydrogen, and and I've used it from. It's, and it's not the first time I've used it, but I was using it again this week, and I'm like, why haven't we talked about this on the show? This yeah. is actually a really great sequencer. And the the thing that separates a good sequencer from a from a great sequencer, in fact, really what separates a a, a good sequencer from a usable sequencer for me, is the ability to subdivide into very very small increments. So a lot of sequencers will top out at. At, uh, I've seen some of them top out at sixteenths of a note, and that is that's barely even usable. Um, you want to go all the way up to thirty seconds, and I think hydrogen will do sixty fourths. Uh-huh. Um, so you can you can you can you can you can subdivide up those notes, uh, which obviously expands the amount of flexibility that the sequencer has, and uh, you can do things like triplets and and, and all those things. Um, and actually, the demo you have, the guy actually does a really good job of of laying down some pretty sick beats. Yeah, and he's got some nice plugins too that work with this application as well. Which is really nice. The Calf plugins. This so this is so like if I want like a nice beat or something like that. This is like it's not quite like Garage Band or what is this, Noah? No, well, yeah. So it's if it, let's say let, okay. So let's say you want to let's say you want to compose a piece of uh, of electronic music. The first thing you need is is a beat, and so this is how you would generate that. And uh-huh. once you have this sequence, you can export this out and bring it into something like LMMS and use LMMS to to you know to to add and layer. Or if you if you're doing if you wanted to do quote unquote traditional music, you could export the beat from uh, Hydrogen out and bring it into something like Audacity or. Um, or our doer, yeah. and then record on top of that if you had an electric guitar or an acoustic guitar or, or something like that. Um, but but the nice thing about a, a sequencer over actually recording uh, over recording a beat is so a drum beat is going to be a lot of times the same thing, very repetitive over yeah. and over and over again. Yeah. And if if you're a drummer, then you have to you have to get that right all you know whatever 64 <laughs> measures yeah it, with this i get it right one time in the computer and i just repeat and yeah. then i add a fill in there and yeah. it gives you the option to add you can cycle between uh different sequences so if you have one sequence that's that's your actual beat and then if you have another that's a fill and then you go back and maybe you had a bridge you can have all of those identified and then you can just click through them and it'll play one play one play one then you say after 16 measures of this then i want one fill then i want the bridge then i want to go back into the main beat and i want that for another 60 measures while i do verse two and and you can you can sequence all that out and, and it, it takes a matter of minutes um it is a super cool useful piece of software and it d- deserves some attention yeah it definitely does deserve some attention and uh they just had a post up uh, uh well they've been a while since they have any posts up but uh, go over to uh, hydrogen-music.org we'll have a link in the show notes if you want more and give them a little attention and let them know we appreciate a project like this on the Linux desktop this example this is a this is the perfect example of something we'd like to spotlight in the open source project to let you guys know that Sometimes, you know, we get a bit of a stereotype out there about what's available on the Linux desktop, and then you see something like this, and you're like, holy crap, that's way cooler than I realized the Linux desktop even had available for it, and we need to support projects like this. So you'll find a link in the show notes. They have a call out right there about 14 different ways to contribute to the project, and they haven't had a post in a long time since then. So let's give them a little love and see if maybe they can keep developing this amazing piece of software for the Linux desktop. 